What's up, Chuckle Fox, and welcome back to Wrench's Way 2. This episode, we are going to be focusing on the construction of your hull and how to lay it out and armor it. So I'm going to be showing you lots of examples of from my own ships and then also, of course, building our hull from the ground up. Now, quick disclaimer, the cannon that we're going to be using is not the one that we built in the first episode because I goofed and I forgot to save that one so I had to make a new one it's pretty much the same thing just a different turret cap and for this whole construction and the superstructure building and everything I have a ship I'm going to be referencing but I have something to show you all the ship I'm going to be referencing is the Kirov from the Russian Navy back in World War II ish I'm using this 3d model from the great website of Sketchfab if you have any replica of ship or any ideas that you want to just look at and get a good view of the proportions and how certain details look on ships sketchfab is an awesome website to check out for 3d models they have tons and tons of different ships that you can look up just look up a reference and see if they have it and if they do you can find great quality 3d models like this i'm not sponsored by them but it helps immensely especially if it's your first time building a somewhat realistic ship this is going to help you an egregious amount just to be able to see how things are supposed to look how to get your superstructure down and then you can also add your own little twist to it if you don't like in this case we're not going to have these guns here i'm going to do something a little bit different here so we can make your own minor tweaks to it but i highly recommend if you're going to find a reference image to help you build your ship sketch is an awesome place to go anyway on to our tutorial first off we're going to want to set out what kind of a whole design we want. So to start off with that, we want to see what the front back profile is going to be. The front to back profile that I'm talking about here is mainly what you see with the angles there on the side down in the water line or the red line, as you can see here. Even though this is a fairly basic design and it's okay, it can look better. Now, for granted, this is the best for armor wise all the way down to the base of your ship. You have more space between uh, the outside of the ship and the gun. Now, the kind of whole design that I like to personally do is something more of in the middle. Have about half of the red line being at a 45 degree slope and then half of, about half of it straight up and down. Adds a little bit of extra shape to your ship and look, just looks better in total. Now, because the reason why we don't go all the way up to the top of the red line at a 45 degree angle, not only do we have to take into consideration how big our gun is, we also want to make sure that we don't compromise too much of the armor. So since the lowest part of the hole where it's narrowest is where the narrowest parts of the components are, such as the turret base, we shouldn't be all too worried about it and it's not compromising the armor all too much. Other ways you can also extend out how far the 45 degree angle on the side of the hole is to do this little trick right here. This right here is using the four meter square corner. You can do that and continue the edge up whenever you expand the hole out by one meter. This not only adds just a little bit of extra design to your ship, it's just, it just looks a lot better. Now, this is an example of what it is to be too extreme. Of course, in this picture, as you can see, we don't have enough room for the turret to sit all the way down at the bottom of the ship, which in this case, we really wanted to do. Also, this is going to inherently make the ship a little bit more difficult to get to be stable on its own because it doesn't have a lot of surface area to sit down flat. It's going to be able to roll side to side a lot easier and it's going to be a lot harder to be able to put control surfaces to be able to keep the hull from rocking back and forth so much. Same with pitch as well. So in this case, not only is it compromising the armor, it doesn't look that good because it's too much of an extreme angle, especially whenever you take into consideration how straight up and down the sides of the hole are, this is not a good option. Well, this is an example of a bad design here. This is what you should not do. This, the middle option, is of course what we are going to be going with. This is what we want and is the most ideal for the shape of our ship in total. Also, while constructing the hole, I will also show you how to get the angles as the, the hole spreads out to its maximum width from the front to the middle of the ship. I will show you how to do that very easily, very smoothly. It does involve decorations on the hole, but there are a lot of decorations that you can do once, copy, or make minor tweaks to it that don't take that much time, especially once you do it a lot after 
making a few ships, you're going to get pretty proficient at being able to do it very quickly and it won't take you much time at all. When it comes to beginning the hole, in my personal opinion, in my personal way, I always start from the bottom to the top. And how I start this is that I just make one solid metal or alloy, whichever you wish to make your ship out of, beam, going to approximately eyeballing the length of the ship that you want it to be. Then I will paste down the guns into positions that I want it to be. Now, when it comes to making the certain guns, as in this case, we have two guns up in the front and we want the back one to be raised up above the other gun. Here's what I'm going to recommend. Do not, in any case or any scenario, move the entirety of the internals up by the amount of blocks that you want it to sit up. Extend the turret neck. Do not extend the, turn the internals. You don't want to do this because you want all of your internals to be as deep down in the hole as you can and armored as you can. If you stack, let's just say we want it to be three blocks taller and we stack three blocks underneath this turret cat, this uh, turret base here, we are going to make that the upper section of the internals of the gun more vulnerable to fire. So instead, what I would much, 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 much prefer that you do and recommend is that just easily go into prefab mode, quickly prefab your turret cap. There we go. Oh. And then extend the turret neck up by however much you want. So in this case, we want it to be up by So in this case, we want to extend the turret neck up by about three blocks. Now that we've got the layout of our primary guns that we want, now we can start widening out the hole. So as I stated earlier, we are going to start from the bottom up. Now, when it comes to holes, I always use the four meter beams for almost the entire ship. This is because it's the most gradual slope and I want to keep everything consistent and easier to do transitions. Something else that we are able to do if we start from the bottom, we can also kind of eyeball about how much we want that angling that I was talking about for the shaping of the hole to be. We can also judge about how much armor we're going to be able to put on each side of the ship or however much you want, whether you're going to do a cruiser, battleship, destroyer, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's all up to you. It's your ship at the end of the day. So. What I'm doing here is that as I start going back, I have the angle be fairly sharp, and then I'm going to start staggering it. So a straight metal slope beam there, and then a transition. And you will see as we continue on, I'll then expand it to a three gap. There's a two gap, two gap, one gap, and you'll just gradually start making your way backwards. Now, I'm looking at this and going, hmm, this is a little bit too wide for the base of the hole, but what we can do instead is we can go ahead and cut it off there, extend it back, and then we'll go ahead and shape the rear of the hole too. Now, don't worry about the angling sloping up at the back for the propellers. We'll get there. I'll show you what I do. Makes things a lot easier. So, there we go. Wow, I was even perfect on that. I'm just, I'm a Fucking God. So now we will go ahead and start our transitions here. Now we can take a look at our ship from the front and go, hmm, how much wider do I want that to be? I'm not too sure. But we can look at the sides here and go, hmm, if I continue to make this angle up about three blocks, it's going to be really wide. So we're actually going to shave it down by another block. Whenever it comes to making holes, you sometimes there's some experimentation, trial, and error. There is no harm in do, experimenting with something going, nah, that doesn't really look good. Deleting it and trying something else. It's all in the name of experimentation and for you to learn how to make these holes even better. Elevate your ships above what the average person is able to do or wants to do. So now here, we are going to do that trick as I was, as I was showing you earlier have that square corner there. We're going to expand the hull out by one. We're going to increase the shape 
the angling on the side of the hull by one. And it'll just continue out until we don't want it to be any wider. So, we have a one meter gap there. We have two here. So now, we're going to come up here. We're going to make another square corner. Up. Now, we're going to do it again. And this will be about as wide as we want the ship to be. So, the angling up here in the front just gradually gets wider as it goes. And it just looks better. Sometimes I don't have any good ways to explain why it looks better. You could just look at it and you could tell. Yeah, that looks better. And it's all by your judgment. If sometimes you don't want it to be as an extreme of an angle, it doesn't have to be. It's what you want it to be. If you think it looks good, more power to you. Because at the end of the day, it's your ship, or your plane, or your tank, or your whatever. So if you like it, it's all that matters. When it comes to up here in the front of the hole, I'm only going to do about that much of the sloping up in the front of the hole for right now. Until we get the height of the hole that we want. Which, we'll go ahead and do that now. So... I always put into consideration I want two layers of deck armor, one exposed there for a turret neck, and it's up to the turret. So, I look at how many blocks we got, kind of eyeball and go, hmm, where do I want the red line to end? Let's go with right there. That looks about good. And we'll go ahead and experiment with one more. That looks good. Looks about even. And I like that. So, we will continue to build up the hole. Now, when it comes back here to the back of the hole, of course, we want to taper it down some more again. So, we'll go ahead and just kind of eyeball it here as well. Kind of look and go, okay, so we got a one meter gap there. So, we want two meters here. There we go. Now, we got two meters there. Now, something I'm going to do with this hole that I don't do on a lot of my ships, but we can kind of see on the reference image that we go back to earlier, uh, the rear gun is going to sit lower than the front guns because the hole goes down a, just a little bit. As you can see right here, that divot down, the turret is weighing lower to the water than the front ones. So we're going to have to make a little bit of an adjustment with the turret necks on these guns and the hole. Now, the level that our turrets are at is good to go. We are ready to continue the hole. So, we need to take a quick glance at about how far down or how far back in the hole that divot is going to be. So, in this case, it's more of an eyeball. So, it looks like it's going to be about... About right here. Will be a safe bet. Something else we're going to do is that since we're going to be elevating that a little bit, which just was poor planning on my part, so I apologize, but so be it. I make mistakes too. I'm not a god, as for some reason some may think. What I'm doing here is just raising up the red section by one, which we have to redo a little bit of it just because of the positioning of the colors. Because I am very nitpicky when it comes to my colors. And as you can see, I build while painting. It saves an immense amount of time. Especially after whenever you're doing all your detailings. Not having to go through and paint the entire ship uh, is just another added thing. I already know what I want the colors of the ship to be. And then it also helps me visualize about how, how high I want the ship to be. Or how tall I want the hull to be. Uh, and how far I want the covers to go up the turret, up uh, the side of the turret. So, it aids in the visualization of the hole. So, now that we have raised the hole up, the red section up by one, I'm going to go ahead and get our new level here.
With that, the basic shape of our hole is now complete. Now comes the more detailed aspect of it and the finer tweaks to the exterior of the hole. So as we can see here, we've got a good basis whenever it comes to the angling of the holes when it comes up to the front and the rear. But we want to make those completely smooth. So let's get to it. First off, up here in the front, we want to go ahead and smooth out this angle to where is a that four meter offset all the way up. So we're going to come up here to do control shift X. There we go. Now it's smooth. And now we could just copy that and bring it to all of them. Now the front angle is nice and smooth. Now we move on to these angles here. Now this won't be absolutely 100% perfect because of the offset that we have here, but that's okay. That minor detail won't be that much of a problem. So literally all we have to do in order to make these a smooth transition is so we have a two meter, we have a eight meter gap using four meter beams and wedges and such. So we'll just move by half a block for half a block forward. Multiply it by two. There. It's filled the gap. And there we go. Easy as that. Nothing super fancy, nothing super extreme or difficult to do. Something very simple and quick to do already made the entire front part of the hole look so much smoother and better. Now we just do the exact same thing to the rear. Now, before we actually mimic the rear, we want to go ahead and get our angling for where the propellers are going to go. Which some of you may have been questioning by now, like, did he forget to do that? No, I didn't. This is about the step where I normally get to it. So you'll want to put these little pieces here so the whole rear end doesn't fall off. But we're going to go ahead and chop this part off. We are actually going to make that more tapered down to like that. But, in this case, what I'll do, so I'll go ahead and get the entire shape of the hole done and go, okay, now I've got all the shape, I've got everything up top taken care of, now I want to make this rear end section, here's what I do. Chop its ass off. And we start from there. So, I have multiple different ways that I will, or mainly, I say multiple as in, I have two different ways that I will do the technique for sloping up the rear. So there's of course the casual way of just sloping it up with just straight four meter beams or four meter uh, slopes, head it up like that. Or it could be a little bit extra fancy and use four meter offset. It does make some of the transitions a little bit harder and not everything exactly perfect, but it does help with the looks. Of course, that's what I'm here for, to give you the good looks. So we can just start gradually bringing up that slope with the four meter offsets. And as we go, we can also And just like that, using that technique of using the offsets has now created a fantastically beautiful, smooth ass. Take that as you wish. Now, we move on to smoothing the hole once again. Make sure that you're on mirror. For those who might be following along and building, you, you have it in mirror mode, haven't you? I sure hope so. Anyway... Moving on, we're going to use the exact same techniques as we did up in the front, here in the rear. So we're going to close that gap. That's a four meter gap.
Now, when it comes to trying to angle this properly, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You might not be able to get it absolutely pitch perfect. I know. I know. Some of you may be perfectionists like me, but sometimes you got to make a compromise. Because the thing with me and Minecraft is, is I'm in a unique section here. I'm not the full detail to every little minute part replica builder. But I'm also not a shitty box builder. I'm a nice, happy middle ground. That's what makes that's what sets my stuff apart from a lot of other people's. It's because I'm not I'm not basic, but I'm also not super over the top. So there's some cases where you gotta compromise and you gotta suck it up and go, okay, well I can't get this angle absolutely pitch perfect, but I can get it close. I can at least make it look better than it does playing Jane. Because as much as I would love to get every little tiny detail as perfect as I can, I'm not that patient. Nor are a lot of you. Understandably so. So, we continue on. Now, in this case, we might want to try... This is where some experimentation comes in. Mm. So, what we can try and do is we can try multiple different slopes here or the offsets transition so with a little bit of experimentation look at that we got that angle pretty well down packed now here comes the shitty part we don't really have any kind of good transition in the game in order to be able to do this properly. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to suck it up. It won't be perfect. Or can it? Hold on. I got to think here. What kind of transitions or anything that I could do to get this to work? I got to think. I got to think. A few moments later. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I figured it out. I'm not taking my own advice of sometimes you can't get it perfect. And my brain was driving me nuts saying, You must. So, here I am, driving myself insane. Wonders of mimics, my friends. We are about to get it. So, I'm going to do that. Why did you copy that over, you dumb bitch? And then, just like that, we could come here, use that little slope to our advantage, come through, We can make a nice spot for a propeller to go. Yeah, yes we can, yes we can. So... As I've said before, I will say many times, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever the fuck you specify yourself as. Experimentation. Trial and error. Try new things. Go out and do shit. If you don't like it, 
then don't ever do it again. Try something different. You gotta experiment. The only way you're ever going to be able to come up with good designs and good design and uh, good techniques and such is just to practice. You just gotta do it. It's not easy. It's and I'm never going to say it was easy. I have, for the love of God, I have. I just crossed 2,000 hours in this game. It is a lot. It is the most that I have in any game that I have ever played, and it's by far my favorite game, obviously. But some don't have time for that. Okay, but. Take time to experiment. Take time to try new techniques, new designs, because you may find something that you like that you could do for your vehicles that makes them unique in their own way. Set you apart from everybody else. That's what I'm here to relay to you. These are just techniques that I want to relay to you that can help get you on the right path to figuring out what your real style is or what little techniques you want. Now, with that being said, we've got this bottom section all mimicked up and taken care of nice and smooth. Hope you were paying attention. And let's continue and finish up the job. So here we could just do, this is a pretty easy one. It's a four meter to another four meter. So we could just do two to four meter transition, double it. Alrighty, and with that, we have now completed the smoothing of the rear and the front of the hole. The exterior of the hole is now complete. We are ready to begin the internals of the ship, such as armor, EMP protection, and layout. Now, if you don't know anything about EMP protection, well, allow me to show you. Here is a surprise EMP lesson. First thing in our EMP lesson is to ask, what is EMP? And how does EMP work? EMP, for those who are unaware, stands for Electromagnetic Pulse. This is a certain type of warfare and different kind of damage that's in the game that targets electronics. It will fry and destroy any kind of electronics that EMP is able to touch, such as AI, processing components, detection components, local weapon controllers, surge protectors, and batteries. This kind of damage is especially deadly on smaller craft that are unable to counter anything like that, such as aircraft, very susceptible to EMP smaller tanks, and other vehicles of the sort. Now, EMP is a certain protection feature that I am starting to implement onto a lot of my newer ships and make them damn near EMP proof. So, this is going to show you how EMP works as a visualization and explain how it works. So as you can see here, we have an example. We have surge protectors on heavy armor, we have a little bit of heavy, uh, heavy armor on box with ammo, and then we also have a sample AI surrounded in heavy armor on top of stone. So when it if you don't know anything about EMP and what it does to any of the electronics, it will pretty much fry any of your electronics. If an EMP blast happens near your turret, guess what? It's going to destroy the local weapons controller on your turret base. It will no longer be online. If you get hit near your AI with EMP, guess what? Your, EM your AI is going to get knocked out and your ship is out of the battle. That's no good. But there is a way and a technique to be able to counter EMP effectively. And that is by making what is called, or what I call, EMP networking. EMP networking is, as you can see throughout this little layout here, we have everything that's related heavy armor and electronics wise connected by heavy armor. Heavy armor is a perfect conductor for EMP. So no matter where the EMP charge hits, it is going to migrate its way to the nearest heavy armor and follow the heavy armor. What you want to do for EMP networking is that you want to have a dedicated room where you have surge protectors attached to heavy armor. As you can see here, none of the EMP surge protectors are attached to anything except one part of the heavy armor. You do not want your surge protectors touching anything else except for the heavy armor, not even touching next to each other. You want to spread them out. This is because whenever EMP comes in and goes into the EMP network by going through the, he the heavy armor, 
you want to create a dead end. A dead end is going to be one of these surge protectors because that is going to neutralize the EMP blast. So like I said, no matter where the EMP blast lands on your ship, it's going to migrate its way to the heavy armor circuit and then it's going to make its way to the surge protectors. Here is a visual representation. As you can see here, we have our heavy armor going this way to the EMP network. So it doesn't matter where we hit, we can hit over here. And it's going to make its way to the EMP network. As you can see there, it just destroyed one of the surge protectors. And it did no harm to anything else. That's because that EMP blast, which was the max charge EMP blast that you can use in the designer mode. This right here, the EMP blast, I have it at the maximum 1 million EMP charge and it destroyed one singular surge protector. That's the beauty of this. No matter where you hit, you can even hit directly right here. It's not going to do a damn thing to your AI because it's going to go towards a dead end. So if you don't have the surge protectors there, and especially if you have any kind of electronics attached to heavy armor, it's going to treat that electronic as the dead end and destroy that component. So you want something destructible for it to go to, such as the surge protectors. That is what they are designed for. So you want to integrate, you want to make a network, which is what I do, in the belly of the ship, going to all heavy armor across the ship. This ship is an example of how it uses it. There's heavy armor streaking its way all the way through the entire ship, connecting everything that has heavy armor to one singular room that has EMP surge protectors. Those surge protectors is what allows that ship to be almost fully EMP proof. We can put as many charges here. As you can see, it's going to keep destroying those surge protectors. Now, of course, this is a lot of EMP charge all at once. The likelihood of you actually getting struck by that much is very unlikely. But... As you can see, we were hitting right next to the AI. It is exposed. Now, of course, we have an insulator, such as rubber or stone. I personally use stone. But it still did nothing to the electronics and did not damage anything except for those surge protectors. This is how you counter EMP. This is what you want to do on all of your ships. I don't care if it's a small little destroyer, a small little plane, tank, giant battleship. I don't care what you need to implement this EMP surge protecting into it. Especially if you have like a bomber plane, they're more susceptible to EMP blasts. You're going to want an EMP network in order to neutralize it. So on this ship, we're obviously going to be implementing that. So now that we've gone over the e quick EMP lesson, we are going to move on to the armor layout and what I like to do whenever it comes to armor. I always armor the ships first based off of where the guns are. So we are going to start with the armor around the guns. Now, personally, I'll make armor barbettes that go uh, that are attached to the actual sub object itself. But in this case, since this is a relatively small gun, I don't normally put it on smaller guns. I normally put that on bigger cannons. So in this case, we're going to create heavy armor around it. And as I showed in here, don't worry, we're going to put a second layer of armor underneath here. This is going to be... Oh, well, we just destroyed all that. This is going to be covered in alloy. I like to do double layer uh, belly armor. As shown in the showcases, if any of you shown has seen those. This is going to have alloy all across the bottom, not only for extra armor, but also to aid with buoyancy. So, as I was stating, we are going to put our EMP network through here. I'll put it all across... The belly of the ship here. I'll make it run all the way back. This is another beauty of it is that it doesn't even have to touch all of all surfaces of the EM of the uh, heavy armor. It can literally just be one block touching it. Guess what? It's going to connect the entire network now. So we're going to leave that like that for right now. We'll get back to connecting it here in a minute. It doesn't even have to be full blocks. What we're going to do is we're just going to... Oh, come on. Why, why are you not... There you go. Thank you. Game, don't be retarded. Oh, that's why. I accidentally destroyed a block. Oops. So... Alright, so 
So I'm going to continue making all the armor around the gun, and then I'm just going to copy and paste it all the way back. It just saves time along the way. So we're going to go in and do a we're going to do a layer of metal here. All right, now we want to add some kind of uh, heat, hash, any kind of internal damage rounds. So what we can do for that is we can add metal slopes like so, and we want them to point downwards. We want them to go out the bottom of the hole. That is going to help angle. This angle not only acts as a an air gap, but it will help deflect the internal damage like heat pellets, hash pellets, whatever the fuck you want to call them downwards we want them to go away from the rest of the rest of the ship we want it to go downwards and out or you can also have it go upwards and out it depends it depends on what you prefer but it's not that important not at least not for my testing now of course all these things that i'm saying is from personal experience and what i personally do i am not a master of all of this i am not the most op meta bullshit person out there i'm not and I'm not going to act like I am. These are just the ways that I do it. And if you want to, and they, I've seen reasonable success with my designs because of it. So if you wish to do it like me, go for it. If you think I'm wrong, go ahead. Tell me in the comments. Because some of you in the comments of the previous video have actually made very good points. And I appreciate your feedback. And especially those who download my vehicles on the workshop. There is a person on there who basically dissected the living fuck out of one of my cruisers but he gave actually very good constructive criticism that and i can appreciate that so if you have actual good feedback to give me like hey there was an issue with your ship here i think you could do this to improvement i i, I do read the comments and i do appreciate your feedback and letting me know especially if there's problems with the vehicle or if a certain design uh, aspect that i use that may be incorrect and you go hey this actually i've tested this and it actually works pretty well you might want to try this i am all ears i am open to it because as with all of you that are watching this i'm still learning the game too even with all my hours there's still so much to learn about the game and so much that because i'm also not a meta builder i don't build vehicles to be the absolute i don't build them to be the absolute shit to to uh, use exploit every single little every bug every op thing at the time i don't like doing that personally i am not that kind of person so personally i don't do that but like i said if you have any actual really good feedback and just hey i downloaded your design or hey i watched your video and i found and I've actually found that this certain armor scheme or this certain arm out, arm, uh, armor layout actually works better or worse or yada, yada, yada. Leave it down in the comments. I read just about every single one of your comments. So feedback is appreciated. And if there's any kind of videos that you all want to see, different kind of content and such that you want to see, leave a comment down there as well. I Like, I, like I've already said like three or four times, I do read the comments. So... Now with that, we have our armor and our heat protection laid out. Just about, kind of forgot about this guy. There we go. Now we've got it laid out. We've got our guns and let's go ahead and save this. This one we are gonna name, hmm, what should we name the ship? You know what? I'll leave that up to you guys. I'll let this be kind of a memorable thing for you all. Honorary in my fleet. I want you all to leave me some names, names of the class. So I have the Gangit class coming soon, the Bismarck class also coming soon. That one is taking me a bit to do, but it's coming. The Knight class and a Strider. So leave some names down in the comments and I'll pick whichever one I like the best or the one that is the highest ranking one, uh, depending on what it is. So yeah, if you have any ideas for the name, for the name of this class, Go ahead and leave it down in the comments. I'd appreciate the help. For right now, we're going to just call this CC-05. Now that we've got the armor around the guns taken care of, now we want to go ahead and get to the rest of the internals, aka our ammo and AI and engines. So in this case, I'm going to put in one of my steam engines, which, as somebody has stated in the comments beforehand on some of my ships, 
and on some of my designs, I have actually edited one of my uh, engine designs to perform a little bit better from the feedback from one of y'all. So appreciate that. We're going to do the high output. So we're going to go ahead and space that. Oh, about right there. That's a good one. This steam engine actually does pretty well. I'm not going to lie. Pretty proud of it. Made a few adjustments to it. As from the last one, if those who downloaded and commented on the steam engine for this thing, I did change out the turbine for those wheels that do give extra, extra power. And then I also added those generators on there so I could go ahead and use the battery power from it too. So, And as you can see here, I'm connecting all the heavy armor to that network. We still want to keep the continuity of that network all across the ship. Now, I'm going to start using some more alloy here, especially for more internal walls that don't really serve too much of a purpose armor-wise. Uh, just to help try to save weight, we're probably going to have to use up props on this. I have to use up props on a lot of my ships these days because of the amount of armor that I use, especially when it comes to heavy armor and metal. But that's a tactic that you probably want to try and implement, is try to implement alloy walls wherever you can if it's not very important or just needs a minor amount of armor. Alloy will do just a trick and will aid with your buoyancy and weight. So keep that in mind while building your ship. Now, something else that we need to take into consideration here is where our secondaries are going to be. So we're going to have a few of those secondaries in the rear. I said I wasn't going to do exactly what they want or the reference shows. And instead, I'm going to do this kind of turret cap. Hang on. Now that we got the AI, the engine, and all the armor around all guns that we are going to have on this ship taken care of, we need to figure out how much ammo we are going to need. So this is where we go ahead and place down our ammo customizers and put a little bit of ammo on the ship and use the designer command to be able to refill all APS shells and then now give us a reading of how much ammo we are going to need to be able to keep up with consistent fire. All right, we are going to go ahead. I'm going to experiment with a Sabo tipped warhead. The new solid, and we're also going to put a super cavitation base on it. Now, some of these different kinds of attachments, such as the super cavitation base, and also the, I think it's the penetration depth fuse, will not take up an entire slot here. So, as you can see, if I change this back to gunpowder, you can see that it went up a little bit, but if I go back to the super cavitation, it actually decreases it a little bit. So we can adjust it just a little bit. There we go. We are within range. So we're going to have an expected armor pierce of 56.3 and an expected kinetic damage of 1,926 per shot. And then this is how I have my Seawish shell set up. You want a visible tracer so it's able to increase its accuracy after firing for a little bit, and a heavy head works best what for SeaWiz purposes against missiles and cram. Flak is also a surprisingly good shell to use in higher calibers against cram. Since a lot of cram volleys are all together, the flak actually spreads out all of its damage and it's, uh, it's best used at higher calibers because the bigger the radius, the more of the shells it hits, the more damage it does, and the quicker it's able to take it out. So if you have a bigger ship and you want it to be able to take out large cram volleys such as the Stronghold, while also being able to take out large missile volleys such as the Strassland from the Steel Striders, using a mixture between high, higher calibers such as like 100 millimeter flak and maybe 50 to 30 millimeter heavy head will be a good combination to be able to counter both. That is from my personal experience and my personal testing. So with that, we're only going to be probably going up against small cram volleys and missiles. So we're going to keep it as just the heavy head. All right, now that we've got our ammo customizers, we're just going to slap down some ammo for the time being and go ahead and assign all of our guns here. So we'll just go, whoop, did not need to click on that.
Now that we've got a little bit of ammo and all of our shells aside, now we have to see how much ammo we are going to need. So we don't want to put an excessive amount of ammo on a ship. Not only does that create more explosive points, it also just increases the overall cost of your ship. So the way to be able to tell how much ammo you need after loading up all of your shells, is that you can come over here and press V while looking at the ship. Whenever you come into this menu, you can see right here, weapon material usage is 2,480 materials per minute. The ammo boxes allow usage of 2,450 per minute. So in, in this case, the ammo that we just randomly slapped down was just about the amount that we need. Now, we're going to have two medium torpedo launchers up on the deck of this ship, so we also have to increase that by a little bit as well. What I like to do personally is I like to spread the ammo across the entirety of the ship instead of clumping it all together. Not only does clumping it all together uh, create a very nice explosion whenever it gets hit, uh, if one ammo gets hit, guess what? You still have two to three more places that ammo, that ammo has not been knocked out at. So you are still in the fight. Instead of having it all centralized in one location, as neat and tidy and nice as that may be, it's not going to be nice whenever you lose all your ammo. And guess what? You are knocked out of the fight, chuckle fuck. Good job. So you need to be able to spread it out. All right, and now as we see here, we have 3,650 that is allowed. So we have a little bit too much. So we can go ahead and just cut back that a little bit. And at about 3,000, that's good. That allows us to be able to have some missile interceptors if we wish. So let us go ahead and, you guessed it, connect it to the EMP fucking network. And just like that, we are ready to put the deck on this ship and then our next step after this will be in the next episode, building the superstructure. So let's go ahead and get the finishing touches on this baby, why don't we? And with that, we now have completed our hull. We have the entire layout of the hull, design-wise and actual organization of it, with the armor and our gun layout. The deck is now on, and our next step is in the next episode, with the construction of the superstructure. We have two videos left in the series, the superstructure and then our final detailing and combat testing video. So I want to thank you all for watching and the immense support that you all have provided on the first video of this second series for tutorials. I appreciate all the support. The amount of subscribers and views I've gotten off of that has far surpassed what I expected it to do. So thank you all once again for that and be sure to tune in next time for the superstructure video. Thanks.